Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. And a lot of different things going on, not just in Ukraine, but also in the Middle East. And Russia, of course, uh, active in the Middle East as well, in Bahadur, which is northwest of Aleppo. Uh, a little place there that uh, Russia, for some reason, is uh, dropping some bombs there. And, of course, that's very close to where Al-Qaeda, al-Nusra, a lot of those factions had fled to there's a little border zone there, there that they have kept safe uh, Western backed allies uh, that uh, have wreaked havoc on Syria for years. Speaking of wreaking havoc on Syria, uh, I want to just kind of share with you here. This was a video that came out of Syria here. This is, of course, their, uh, their the, the, the Orthodox Easter, the uh, the uh, uh, Russian Orthodox Church is Easter there. And as you can see, here we have a president, President Bashar al-Assad, um, uh, that is, oh, and as far as the Syrian president goes, you know, he is Muslim, but he has certainly been a defender uh, of freedom of religion. And if you watch how the people react to President Assad, uh, the Syrian president, and he's genuinely loved by the Syrian people. And it doesn't matter which religion they are. I mean, just looking at this picture here, these are Christian people that are so elated uh, when they see their president come out. And, uh, you know, so I, I think, you know, it, it speaks volumes that this man uh, is loved and of course you know and has been a defender of freedom of religion this one thing i, I have i have have appreciated about uh president uh, uh, bashar al-assad and uh and something that has been totally overlooked by the west you know as, as i've said before in many of the teaching videos that i've done on this is that um is when the scripture s speaks about the fall of damascus uh, it clearly shows it will be as a result of both Western Christianity and that of the Jewish people that they would cause this demise. And it was something that uh, in Isaiah that God was not pleased about at all. He's not pleased uh, by the fall, the fall of Damascus. Uh, he says, in fact, he says, and just paraphrasing, you have forgotten uh, uh, in one place, you have forgotten your rock, which is Christ. It's read, read right directly to the Christians. And then he says, and you have not been mindful of your God. Uh, I just have to pull that back up. I'm going to be doing some teachings anyway. But uh, so Damascus being a ruinous heap is not. Uh, in fact, let's just go to it. My gosh. I mean, really, that's um, uh, really is something that needs to be brought out. OK, so Damascus. Uh, and I don't know if I'm spelling this right or not. Here we go. Yeah, Isaiah 17. Um, let me just, I'll pull this up um, in the Hebrew version of this here. And, and it's not actually, it's, uh, this is a news broadcast, but I want to, because it, it, it bears, bears uh, in mind that we need to be reminded of how that scripture reads of that. You know, we, we know that, is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. And the cities of Aurora are forsaken. They shall be for flocks, which shall lie down, and none shall make them afraid. The fortress also shall cease from Ephraim. That is such an important scripture right there. Ephraim, of course, Ephraim representing the house of Israel, and also representing those early believers of Jesus. Is it what Ephraim is? Because... Damascus, the kingdom from Damascus, Damascus had become a fortress. In other words, they had protected the Christians. This is exactly what we see in uh, these types of footages here. Uh, President Abbas, he is a Muslim, but yet he is there for the protection of the Christian community. community. And one of the oldest communities in the world of the Christian faith, you know, and I'm not when I say the Christian faith, I don't sit there and go along with particular doctrinal beliefs on on what they believe but what i'm saying is is like for example when paul was going on his road to damascus that we know the scripture says he was going to lay waste to the christians that were there in damascus 
And then he was struck down by the bright light and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. Uh, and he says, Lord, who are you? He says, I'm Jesus. See, Paul would have actually gone and fulfilled Isaiah had it not been for that Jesus Christ intervened. This is why he intervened, because this was a prophecy that would be fulfilled in a future, um, you know, a future of this happening there. But when you get further down into this chapter here, verse 10 this is why you find out it's not, it was not God's will for Damascus to be destroyed. For you have forgotten the God of your salvation. That's Israel. That's the Jewish people. You've forgotten the God of your salvation. And then it says, and you have not been mindful of the rock of your stronghold. That was the Christians that had that are the Western Christians that are claiming that they believe that Jesus Christ is the rock of their stronghold. It says, therefore, you did plant plants of pleasantness and just set it with the slips of a stranger. That's like an adulterous affair. In other words, you, but, but in, in, in this here, what he's talking about is they go in there and they have, um, uh, well, they, they go in there and they overthrow the country by, by deception. And this is what's happening even to this day. All of this going back to the time when John McCain was still living and, and they were funding all these terrorist groups to overthrow this country. What a shame. So therefore, you know, you see Russia over there bombing in the city of Baja there, you know, and I don't say that Russia is some saintly, Putin is some saintly guy, but once again, uh, it's still very interesting to look at what's going on there. Uh, it's sad because the Jewish people need to wake up to this evil of this globalists that are running their nation. Anyway, uh, business in, uh, innovation. I actually spoke to a major economist just recently there. We were discussing uh, Israel basically dumping the dollar in favor of the Chinese yuan. It says Israel adds Chinese RMB to central bank reserves for the first time. Cuts the U.S. dollar holdings. Israel's foreign currency reserves have traditionally been made up of dollars, euros, and British pounds. will add four new currencies, including the Chinese yuan. The Bank of Israel has added four new currencies, including the Chinese yuan and the uh, renminbi to its holdings for the first time in the country's history. Bloomberg reported last week the central bank will also trim U.S. dollars and euro holdings in a bid to diversify its foreign reserves, the report said. Boy, doesn't that tell you about, as I had said long ago, uh, folks over there in the intelligence community in Israel kept saying, quit speaking against China. They'll be the next major world superpower. Well, there you go. There you go. All right. Iran also notifies Israel of missiles pointed at Tel Aviv's nuclear and bioweapons facilities. If you remember, I also said to you in some of these intel reports that I get there that Watch what's going to happen in the Middle East over the next month or so. Things could flare up that would bring about a third world war. Well, Iran was named in that. An unnamed Iranian source has revealed to Al Jazeera that Tehran informed Tel Aviv on April 21st. The locations of all Israel's nuclear, biological, chemical weapon sites were known to Iran that Iran has warned Israel that in the event of any aggression, Iran will strike these targets. Now, that's just one thing there, but the big issue is going to be Iran, and, and of course, we're not talking about Iran and Israel. Of course, Israel is the thing, but Saudi Arabia, and I didn't actually think to look at any of that, but we'll look at that in just a moment here. Looks like another Russian fuel depot is on fire this time. Bryansk, uh, one of the key transit points of the Russian armor of the way towards Ukraine. That's in Russia. Yeah in Russia. So this war is not just staying limited to Ukraine. and uh, But Russia is also going to be taking up uh, bombing. Let's see if I got this here. Uh, Ukraine roundup. Russia hits railway. Our railways as U.S. pledges extra weapons. Russia hitting the railway systems there to, stop, uh, to try to stop those weapons coming in to Ukraine. But also that's been uh, tit for tat uh, as well. The U.S. been also targeting uh, railway uh, systems for Russia coming inside of Ukraine. Of course, I always say Ukraine's doing it. Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. Oh, these Ukrainian soldiers are just amazing guys, right? No, they're not. They're <laughs> they're backed by the West. Let's just face the facts. Let's just let's tell it like it is. Okay, so um, 
anyway, though, I, I, I like I said, I wanted to mention real quick to see, um, and I didn't think to do this before coming on, but I'll just quickly look at this uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran, and just let's just uh, pardon me here. Uh, by the way, I do have two sites. And I did not mean for this to happen. It happened a little while back. Um, on my phone, I've got one Twitter account. And then on my computer, I, I was trying to log in one day, and it, it ended up creating a new account called Israeli News Live at Stephen Benoon that really messed me up because I don't like, I didn't want a new account. Uh, and then I had a hard time ever getting them to fix this for me or anything like that. So it's really a mess, and I, I apologize for that, though, because, I, I mean, there's thousands of people, I think 8,000 people that are following us over there on Twitter, but that's only the one on my phone. And so, uh, so but anyway, if, if you want to follow over here, too, go ahead. I, 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 hopefully one day I'll be able to figure out how to get my one that I normally use back on track, which... By the way, for those of you that do follow Twitter, the one that I normally use is, uh, I'll just give you the name of that. Um, even that one's not working very good. That's Israeli News Live at Stephen Dinoon, D-E-N-O-O-N. Um, anyway, it, it's a mess, but uh, that's just for those of you that are curious about that. So anything let's see if we have any latest things that might be going on because I'm, I'm watching very closely Iran and Saudi Arabia Saudi Arabia how to fill around a positive talks in Baghdad last Thursday on normalizing bilateral relations Iran's foreign ministry confirmed on Monday wow I didn't even know that one all right so uh, Iran concern, confirms fifth rounds of talks held with Saudi Arabia well, all right, that kind of throws me for a loop because I had not heard about that. So it makes you wonder. Uh, regional rivals Iran and Saudi Arabia held a fifth round of positive talks in bad light last Thursday on normalizing bilateral relations. Iran's foreign ministry spokesman Saeed uh, Kasba Zedev confirmed on Monday predominantly Sunni Muslim Saudi Arabia and Shiite Iran, which are locked in a proxy conflicts across the Middle East, started direct talks last year to try to contain tensions. But Iran suspended the talks in March without giving any reason after Saudi Arabia executed 81 men in its biggest mass execution in decades. Tehran condemned the executions that activists said included 41 Shiite Muslims. The fifth round of talks between Saudi Arabia and Tehran were held in Iraq and the talks were progressive and positive. Um, Qatsi Bazadeh told a televised weekly news conference. Okay, well... But to kind of see how which way that goes, that was something I was not aware of. Um, so we'll, we we will see. All right, I'll hold back then on that. But like I said, I was told that that would be one, that would be where the issue that could cause World War Three. But if there's talks going on, hey, maybe, 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 uh, maybe that will work out. I know that every time those type things happen, um, something else goes bad. And uh, let's look at it right here. Saudi Arabia and Iran are trying to mend fences as the U.S. retreats when a pyromaniac comes to your home and is dangerous. What is more terrifying is when a pyromaniac comes dressed as a fireman, he said, referring to the U.S. policy on Iran. That's kind of cute. Uh, anyway, so I, I don't know which way that's going to go. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, maybe the U.S. won't be able to stand it if they start to make peace. So they'll throw something in there to cause something to go wrong, to create some kind of problem out there in, out there in the middle of nowhere. All right, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and I'm working on expose. Uh, I've got to do this with biblical prophecy, Jeremiah 30 being one of these, um, and, of course, this major move of trying to make Jesus Jewish uh, and basically making him look like he is a he is a Orthodox rabbi from the Pharisee clan. Sure enough, I have got to deal with this, friends. This, this New World Order move right now is absolutely, um, I don't even know the right words to put it. It's downright in one way terrifying. It is disheartening. Because so many prophecies biblically that have been fulfilled, not all of them, mind you, but many of them have been fulfilled, that are being put today to justify 
the state of Israel today as being a biblical fulfillment. And even like here, you have, for lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will turn the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they, and they shall possess it. Well, like I've said, how many times now? Acts chapter 2. <laughs> Acts chapter 2. What is that verse? Um, what is it? Verse 36, 38, something of that effect there. And when we see that, we find that the house of Israel is already there. Yeah, I, I'll never forget when I was pointing this out one day, somebody wrote me and they says, Brother, uh, can't be because I'm part of the house of Israel. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. All right, so the house of Israel is already there. Why then did Jesus instruct his apostles to go into the, only into the way of the lost sheep of the house of Israel? I, I thought they were lost. If Jesus instructed the apostles to go only into the way of the lost sheep of the house of Israel, they must not have been too lost. And then they end up there on the day of Pentecost. And they also get accused of part of the crucifixion of Christ. I'm really going to go deep into this with you guys. I really want to, I want to help people because listen, even when it talks about this, you know, they'd be there with, you know, unwalled cities and things like that and the prophecies. Yeah. You'd be surprised how well Palestinians fit into that picture. Hmm. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. I trust a uh, little blessing tonight for you and uh, we will talk very soon. And uh, pray for our family. They've been the families have just been going through a tremendously a lot of, of of issues that are going on, and also we have a cat that's been missing for a couple of weeks. Actually, more than a couple of weeks, I guess now. But I, I believe he's alive, and uh, and it may be that he's been taken, um, catnapped, if you were to say. I don't mean to say say that uh, ser sincerely, but also his name's Pepper. That if you would pray for his safe return. Um, I just feel like he did not die, and he is he's, he's loves to be wild. He loves to be in the wild, but I believe there's some very sinister people that may have taken uh, this, this cat of ours that we have loved very dearly. So if you would, pray for him. God bless you, and thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.